Hey there Star Seekers, my name's Luke and welcome back to the channel, where today I'm bringing you a review for a game called Din In Ho Space Adventures. Now if you've been watching the channel for a while, you may remember me reviewing the first Din In Ho Adventures way back in August of last year and I had a lot of positive things to say about the challenging little platformer. In Din In Ho Space Adventures, our lovable little derpy dinosaur returns, but this time he's heading into space for a bit of vertical scrolling shmup action. So let's get into this review and take a look at what the game has to offer, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to be notified of future reviews. So Din In Ho Space Adventure comes to us from Brazil, where it is developed by Din In Ho Games and published by Game Nacional, and it's just released on Switch, where it's available for £8.99 on the UK eShop and $9.99 on the US eShop. Now the story of Din In Ho Space Adventure is a little obscure despite us getting a short comic book style intro, but it essentially boils down to Din In Ho observing some sort of threat on a planet within his solar system, and so he hops into his little spaceship and blasts off to try and stop it. There's very little else in the way of storyline, but to be honest it didn't really have any impact on the gameplay. Now much like its predecessor, Din In Ho Space Adventure is very deceptive, and despite its cutesy appearance and vibrant colour palette, the game is way more challenging than it looks, and you should most definitely prepare yourself for a bit of rage with this one. The control scheme for the game consists of moving your ship with either the left analog or D-pad, and firing your weapon with the A button, and that's it. There are no special abilities, no slowdown mechanics for reducing your ship's speed, and there's only a single weapon type in the game, but despite its simplicity, I actually found Din In Ho's Space Adventures to be just as challenging as some of the bullet hell shooters out there. So the game starts off relatively tame, with the first few levels of the first zone getting you used to the controls, and a few simple enemies are introduced to give you a bit of target practice. The objective in levels is simple, you just need to make it to the end of the level in one piece, but you also need to ensure you gain enough points through destroying enemies and other objects to earn stars once you complete the level. Each of the game's levels are unlocked by obtaining a certain number of stars, and while this does encourage you to focus on shooting stuff and not just dodging your way through them, I kind of felt this was an unnecessary addition, and it can be really frustrating to complete a difficult level, only to find you haven't earned enough stars to unlock the next level. Now while working your way through levels you'll find coins dotted all over the place, and you're going to want to pick as many of these up as you can, as they're used to purchase upgrades, which believe me you're really going to need. These upgrades include increasements to your weapon damage, and granting you these things called pixies, which are these little purple orbs that rotate around you and automatically fire on nearby enemies, but the main upgrade that you really need to focus on will be your ship upgrades. These not only increase the number of projectiles that you fire, they will also increase the number of hearts that you start with, allowing you to take more hits, and this is an absolute necessity in order to progress, as once you get further into the game, it's near impossible to complete levels without taking at least a couple of hits of damage. It's also worth noting that enemies will occasionally drop temporary upgrades, such as a damage shield, extra hearts, weapon upgrades and pixies, but these drops are few and far between, and are completely random. So Din In Ho Space Adventures has three worlds for you to unlock, each containing 11 levels, and a final world boss for you to beat. Once you get through the first few levels of the first world, the difficulty really begins to pick up, and every few levels after this, a new enemy or environmental mechanic is introduced, which really does a good job of keeping you on your toes. Enemy variety is pretty decent, with a good balance between enemies which target you and those which are passively obstructive, and the level mechanics all work pretty well, with each of them adding some good variety and plenty of challenge to gameplay. When it comes to the end of world bosses, the mechanics of each of them were all quite simple, but again they offered quite a reasonable challenge due to the limited movement space available to you, and the fact that they didn't really have any sort of rotation and their attacks came at random. While I quite liked that the bosses had multiple phases, it did feel like there ended up being a few too many things on screen for you to dodge, and the game's first boss took me around 30 attempts to beat. So overall, while I did have a fun but frustrating time playing Din In Ho Space Adventure, I did come away having mixed feelings about the game. 
I found it to be a simple but challenging game with some good variety to the level mechanics and enemies and if you're wanting to put your shmup skills to the test without overcomplicating things then you're sure to get it with this one. I also liked how the game's visuals maintained the cutesy art style of the first game and they kind of reminded me of Fantasy Zone on the Mega Drive. The audio isn't bad either, with the sound effects having that classic retro feel to them, though after replaying the same level about 20 times, the music does become a little bit repetitive. Now before we get onto my criticisms about the game, I want to just say that they're exactly that, my criticisms, and other players might not find these so much of an issue, but I felt that they resulted in gameplay not being as fun as it could have been. So to start with I have to say that I thought the size of Dinning Hall's ship was a little too large and that its movement speed was a little too slow. The actual play area of levels is pretty small to start with, but with the game having such large sprites I found myself having to focus more on avoiding things and less on shooting down enemies and the movement speed really becomes frustrating when you've got to quickly move from one side of the screen to the other or avoid a bunch of projectiles like in the first boss fight. Now I've already mentioned how necessary upgrades are in the game, but the price of these upgrades increases with every purchase and the levels simply don't provide enough coins for you to afford them. What this means is that you're forced to go back to earlier levels and play through them repeatedly just to buy your upgrades and I think this issue could have been easily avoided simply by having every enemy drop just a few coins. Now despite the issues that I've mentioned, Dinino Space Adventure isn't a bad game by any means and while some of the design choices result in a little unnecessary frustration, it's still very playable and pretty fun if you can control your rage. While the game's difficulty factor means it'll likely take you a while to work your way through it, unfortunately there aren't any high score leaderboards or anything to encourage repeat playthroughs and so the standard price point for the game may be a little high for some people. Now I personally was hoping for another creative platformer with this sequel, but it's nice to see the devs trying new things and I look forward to seeing what they come up with next. When it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Dinning Horse Space Adventure 3 out of 5 stars. Dinning Horse Space Adventure is by no means the best shmup on the platform, but if you're looking for a decent challenge and don't mind a bit of a grind, then I recommend checking the game out and supporting the devs. And so that about does it for this review of Dinning Hall Space Adventure on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below, and if you haven't already done so then subscribe to the channel as I upload new Switch game reviews and content every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.